In this video, we're going to be talking about the transverse or transversus abdominis muscle, which often gets the nicknames the corset muscle or the biological weightlifter's belt, and we'll see why that is later in this video. So you can see the transversus abdominis right here in this picture. It's in green. The darker green over here, laterally on both sides, is the muscular part of transverse abdominis. And the lighter green in here is the more tendinous part that exists as an aponeurosis. Also notice that the fibers of a transversus abdominis run horizontally, as opposed to the other abdominal muscles. For rectus abdominis, the fibers ran vertically, and for the internal and external obliques, the fibers ran diagonally. Now, being a large sheet-like muscle, the transversus abdominis is going to have broad origins and insertions. The origins consist of the internal surfaces of the costal cartilages of ribs 7 through 12, which you can see right here on either side. Also, the thoracolumbar fascia, which you can't see in this picture because it exists posteriorly, but we'll be seeing that later on in the video when we talk about the actions of the muscle. It also originates on the anterior two-thirds of the iliac crest, and then deep in here, which you can't see, something called the iliopectineal arch. You'll notice that the origins exist more laterally, and the insertions that we're about to see are more medial. So right here in the midline, these are actually the vertebrae, posteriorly, with their discs in between. I'm not sure why they drew it this way. So you can't actually see the linea alba here, but that's part of the insertion of the transversus abdominis, the linea alba. It also inserts on the aponeurosis of the internal abdominal oblique muscle, and also down here at the pubic crest and pectineal line. Now the innervation of the transverse abdominis muscle is going to depend where you are in the muscle. More superior parts of the muscle, way up here, are going to receive innervation from the intercostal nerves, particularly from the levels of T7 down through T11. But as you go inferiorly down the muscle, it's going to start receiving innervation from the subcostal nerve, so the level of T12, and also from the iliohypogastric nerve and the ilioinguinal nerve, both of which are from the L1 nerve roots and part of the lumbar plexus. The blood supply to transversus abdominis is also large because the muscle covers a large surface area. So these vessels include the lower posterior intercostal and subcostal arteries, the superior and inferior epigastric arteries, the superficial and deep circumflex arteries, and the posterior lumbar artery. Now for the actions of the transversus abdominis, and we're actually going to begin with unilateral contraction because this is the easiest one, so we're going to get it out of the way. So unilateral contraction of this muscle is going to cause ipsilateral trunk rotation. In other words, if we contracted the left transversus abdominis while the right one is relaxed, we're going to get left trunk rotation, and the same thing's true vice versa. Now in reality, trunk rotation from the middle thoracic spine down through the bottom of the lumbar spine is mainly facilitated by the obliques. There's only a minor contribution from the transversus abdominis. So the unilateral function of this muscle is very minor, and sometimes we don't even consider it. The major function is when it contracts bilaterally. This is what everybody thinks about. And the major function here is compressing the abdominal viscera, which helps with two major things. One is active or forced expiration. So of course, after you breathe in, you have to breathe the air out. And if you want to forcibly exhale that air, you have to rely on some of these muscles in the core, in particular the transverse abdominis. And if we further look at this abdominal compression, we know that it increases intra-abdominal pressure, which therefore decreases mobility of the spine by increasing its stability. And increasing spinal stability is particularly important when the spine is under heavy loads, which we will get to in just a couple of minutes. But there's another mechanism by which the transverse abdominis increases spinal stability separate from the abdominal compression, and it has to do with the origins of this muscle posteriorly which is what we're going to look at right now. Now if we look at the lateral core right here, we see that it includes all of the major abdominal muscles except for the rectus abdominis, which only exists anteriorly, so we can't see that. But if we look at the lateral core here, the most superficial muscular layer is the external oblique. The intermediate layer would be the internal oblique, and the deepest layer is the transversus abdominis. 
we follow the transversus abdominis muscle belly posteriorly, we see that it attaches here on a part of the thoracolumbar fascia called the lateral raphe. The lateral raphe is a thickening and folding of the thoracolumbar fascia, which you can think about as giving off several projections of the thoracolumbar fascia. One of those projections is the posterior layer or superficial layer, and it comes around here and attaches indirectly on the spinous process of this lumbar vertebra, which we'll be looking at in just a minute. The lateral raphe also gives off this projection, which is the middle layer of the thoracolumbar fascia, which comes over here to indirectly attach on the transverse process of this lumbar vertebra. And then really coming more off the middle layer here than the lateral raphe is the anterior or deep layer of the thoracolumbar fascia, which comes over here and indirectly attaches on the pedicle of the lumbar vertebrae. You can see here the anterior or deep layer separates this muscle, the quadratus lumborum, from the psoas major, which is right here. You can see that the middle layer separates the quadratus lumborum from the erector spiny muscles right here. And because of its indirect attachments on the transverse processes and spinous process of each of these lumbar vertebrae, when the transverse abdominis contracts, it's able to indirectly pull on those parts, and the tension that that produces is going to further increase spinal stability, particularly when the spine is under a heavy load. Now there's another thing that tends to happen here when the spine is under a heavy load. The vertebral canal here tends to collapse a little bit, meaning that it decreases in diameter. And this is really due to, with heavy loads, these contents kind of get pushed in, and this ligamentum flavum, if there's nothing to hold it in place, might actually move into the vertebral canal a little bit and compress the contents. Well, what's in there? Well, if you're high enough up, it's going to be the spinal cord. If you're around the level of L2 or below, it's going to be the cauda equina. But either way, we don't want that compression, particularly when the spine's under a heavy load. And so we already talked about that this transverse abdominis muscle pulls on the lateral raphe, which is then going to pull on the thoracolumbar fascia, particularly that superficial layer. Remember, the superficial layer comes over here and indirectly attaches on the spinous process. And the way that it does that is by attaching on the supraspinous ligaments. So you see here the supraspinous ligaments, which are really just one continuous unit. They interconnect all the spinous processes. Well, the superficial layer or posterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia attaches on the supraspinous ligament right here. Well, the supraspinous ligament is attached to the interspinous ligaments at each level. The interspinous ligaments are attached at the ligamentum flavum at each level. So when the transverse abdominis puts tension on the thoracolumbar fascia, that pulls the supraspinous ligaments posteriorly, or at least keeps them taut, which then pulls on the interspinous ligaments, which then pulls on the ligamentum flavum and prevents it from bowing into the vertebral canal and compressing the contents. And that's really important when you're under a heavy load, whether it be a squat or a deadlift or something else like that. And so overall, by virtue of these attachments, the transverse abdominis helps to stabilize the lower spine. And you should try it out for yourself. Go ahead and engage your transverse abdominis, activate it, and try to laterally bend your spine or rotate your spine. You'll get a certain amount of movement. Then relax your transverse abdominis and try the same movements. You'll see that with that muscle relaxed, you get much more movement, whether it's rotation or side bending, flexion, extension, all of the above. And that's because when you turn on this muscle, it stabilizes the spine and gives you less mobility. Remember, stability and mobility are inversely related. Then you say, well, what if I don't know how to contract my transverse abdominis? Well, that's what we're going to look at right now. So here I'm going to show you how to activate your transverse abdominis muscle. This position right here is called the hook line position. It's probably the easiest position to learn how to activate the muscle. So you can see I'm on my back. I can have a little bit of head support with a pillow. And then my legs are positioned as such with my feet flat on the floor. So this is the hook line position. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a set of bones, each called the anterior superior iliac spine, or the ASIS. There's a right one and there's a left one. And those are right around where your hip crease is. So kind of the front of your pelvis, you should feel on either side a fairly large bony projection. 
At some point in your life, you've probably bumped it on a counter and it hurts like heck. So those are your ASISs. I want you to touch those with your second and third digit like this. That's how we're finding those, okay? Once you have both sets of fingers on the left and the right ASIS, you're gonna move those fingers directly inward about one inch. Not down, not up, directly inwards, okay? Once you have those fingers moved directly inwards, you're gonna apply a light but firm pressure down toward the floor. So basically in the direction of your spine. In this place, you shouldn't feel any bone on the tips of your fingers, but this is the best place to find where the transverse abdominus is. So hold that position with your fingers just like that. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to basically suck in your gut such that your navel, your belly button, you're drawing inward toward your spine or towards the floor in this position. So do that with me. As you do that, if you're doing it correctly, you should feel the transverse abdominus press into your fingers as it contracts. So draw in your navel. And then when you relax that, you should feel the muscle relax away from your fingers. This is called the drawing in maneuver because we're drawing the navel in toward the spine. And anytime we're strengthening the transverse abdominus, we need to maintain that contraction. The other thing we can do while we have the transverse abdominus contracted is we can perform what's called pursed lip breathing. So we cover that in another video, but we'll review it here. So while you have the transverse abdominus contracted and maintained, I want you to breathe in through the nose for about two seconds and then exhale through pursed lips for about four seconds. So it'll look something like this. So draw in the navel, hold that, and then pursed lip breathing. The transverse abdominus muscle is a postural muscle of the core, so it has a low absolute strength due to its low concentration of type 2 muscle fibers. On the contrary, it's an endurance muscle, so it has a higher concentration of type 1 muscle fibers. So the best way to strengthen the transverse abdominus is with isometric contractions for longer durations. So once you know how to activate the transverse abdominus, one goal that you could have is to be able to hold that contraction isometrically for at least 10 seconds and then relax. And while you're holding that contraction, oftentimes people will do pursed lip breathing because when you inhale through the nose, it actually leads to increased activation of the transverse abdominus. And then you would exhale slowly through pursed lips as we talked about in the clip. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.